All right, let's move on here and talk about our next section. What is creative thinking? Three ingredients to creative thinking and one key. I'm gonna break this down really simply and take books and books worth of creative theory and distill it into three phrases which I think will help you. The first, see differently. The second, communicate clearly. And three, enable a response. This is what good art, clever innovation, and genuine creativity does. The people who create these works, the people who create these systems or models, first, see something different. They communicate what it is clearly. And third, they enable a response. That's what makes good art good art. Good art is where you go to an art gallery or a museum and you look at something and say, ah, oh, this challenges me, this changes me. If you are watching Pick Your Favorite Movie franchise, which is just turn your brain off and forget, that's not art, that's entertainment. If you are called to be a creator, you have to be able to meet these three criteria. You have to be able to see differently, communicate clearly, and enable a response. Creativity is not about what gift you have, but how you choose to operate it. Everyone has a creative gifting. The ones who follow these three principles maximize their creative effect and in turn are able to inspire others to do the same. This is you. This is why you are here. And these three principles are well within your grasp. Everyone has a creative gifting. The ones who follow these three principles maximize their creative effect and in turn are able to inspire others to do the same. I pray this is true of you. And I pray you can find these three principles at work in your creative setting as we move on here. What is creativity? If you are trying to boil down creativity, this magical, mystical idea into one sentence, here it is. I'm gonna give it to you right now. Creativity is simply the ability to see connections and chronicle them. That's it. Make connections. Connect two things that don't work on their own and bring them together and then tell people about it. That is creativity. It might be outworked through an Excel spreadsheet. It might be outworked through two different types of paint. It might be outworked through two different types of prose or poetry, two words that didn't previously exist, two fabrics or patterns that didn't previously exist, two shapes, anything. Creativity is simply the ability to see connections and chronicle them. And trust me, you can do that. God has uniquely gifted you to see in a way that only you can. You might not be the songwriter, you might not be the artist, you might not be the architect, but God has given you a lane to run in and He's given you the ability to see connections and chronicle them. Great creatives are not lucky or even gifted. Some people are, some people have a natural aptitude for things, but real creatives, the truly great creative people who are real innovators, they are curious, they are hardworking and authentic. And guess what? All those three skills, they are free. They don't cost you anything. You don't have to go to university or college or art school to become curious, hardworking or authentic. You don't even need to spend lots of money on a fancy computer with design software and do a whole bunch of study. Curious, hardworking and authentic, those are the three ingredients to strong creativity and real innovation. If you have one, two or three of those, congratulations. You are well set to maximize your creative potential if you want to apply yourself. If you're looking for people in your team, in or around you, if you're looking for creative ideas, look for these people. Look for people who are curious, hardworking and authentic. And you will be on the way to innovating like never before in your setting. So now we're gonna put it all into practice. You're gonna to need to get some stuff ready. So I hope wherever you're sitting at your desk, at your couch, at your dining table, this is where we're gonna do a few exercises together to see how this works. The first exercise is this. It's one of my favorite ones called disassociation seeking new connections in known objects. Okay, so I hope you're ready to go here. Let's see what this looks like. I want you to start with five basic items. What have you got around you right now? Have you got a coffee cup? Have you got a set of headphones? Have you got some pencils? Is there a broom? Uh, around here, I've got a chair and I've got a television and some rugs and a whole bunch of great TV studio stuff. What have you got around you right now? Five basic things. Got them? One, two, three, four, five. Basic items. All right, now here's what you're gonna do in this exercise. You're gonna take each of those five items and you're gonna spend a minute on each one. What I want you to do is take the first item, let's say it's a coffee cup, and I want you to spend a minute thinking up 10 different uses for that coffee cup besides its intended purpose. Ready, set, go. I've started my clock, you've got a minute left, and trust me, I'm not doing this for all five, don't worry. 
10 uses for a coffee cup. Maybe it's a bucket. Maybe it's a stoplight. Maybe it's a hat for an ant. No, like a squirrel. Yeah, cool. What have you got? Other uses. What can you use that coffee cup for? What can you use the lid for? Try it, stretch yourself. Could it be a wheel? Could it be a phone? Could it be a toy? You got a few more seconds. I'm looking for 10 uses for the coffee cup or whatever your first item is. I'm sure by now you've probably found three or four. Maybe some of you have five or six, but trust me, the last ones are the hardest. This is when you take the object and you move it from its intended sphere of use into an entirely new space. This is where you start to see connections and chronicle them. Time's up. I want you to do that again. Press pause for the other four objects around you, whether it's pencils, headphones, phone holders, whatever it might be. Disassociation is a great way to break you out of a creative rut and to put you in a new space in terms of your thinking. You will find so many solutions here that you didn't know existed. Instruments, clothing, props, objects, furniture, all kinds of things. Disassociation is a powerful, powerful tool. And now we're gonna move on to the second creative exercise for our masterclass today. Biomimicry. Sounds impressive, but it's actually very simple. Let me take you through a story and then we're gonna do an exercise together. The problem, Japan were looking to speed up their bullet trains. They tried a number of different engineering solutions with mixed results, but at the end of the day, no real improvement after spending millions and millions of yen. Eventually, after several years, one of the design engineers witnessed a kingfisher bird diving down through the air and going into the water to collect some fish, but also noticed that it created very little splash. He then applied this principle to the shape of the front of the bullet train, modeling the front of the train like the front of the kingfisher, with a pointy part just like the kingfisher's beak. Voila, they'd spent years and so much capital trying to find ways to increase the efficiency and speed of their bullet trains, but in the end, it was as simple as copying the beak of a bird. When they tried out that new model, it moved seamlessly and saved 15% more energy. So now, in this exercise, what's one example of biomimicry that you can think of? Don't think of the bullet train. Take a minute now. Yeah, you, go for it. Take a minute now. What's something that you observe in the natural world, either in a plant, either in an animal, that you can apply to fix a real world problem? I'll leave you with that. You can get back to it. I would love for you to try this. This is great to try and do three or four times, but you know when this is really fun? When you're out on a walk. The next time you're out walking, see what you notice and see what you can apply to your own situation. We're gonna move on to our third exercise now, and it's one of my favorites. It is called Irritation Invitation, finding real solutions within real problems. If you're anything like me, you find it really easy to kind of sit back and get frustrated by things instead of actually understanding that you can have the power to fix them with just a bit of creative thought. You can often go, oh, I'm not a very good problem solver. Well, let's come up with some problems and let's solve them together. Let's see what we have here. I want you to find three things that frustrate you about everyday life. Three things. If you're anything like me, that won't be hard because I get frustrated a lot. Maybe it's abandoned shopping trolleys in the car park. Maybe it's poorly marked bike lanes. Maybe it's trying to find a book that's not in its spot in the library. Maybe it's poorly marked medication. Whatever it is, I want you to find three distinct problems. They can be simple, they can be enormous, they can be in your control, out of your control, but specifically three things that irritate you consistently. Once you've done that, I want you to take a minute for each of those. And I just want you to ask yourself the question, what would it look like if this wasn't a problem anymore? What would it look like if this wasn't a problem anymore? Once you've answered that, come back and ask yourself the next layer of question is go, what solution was brought to this to fix it? Now, you might not be able to fix the problem of the shopping trolleys in the car park, but trust me, if you spend a minute thinking intently about it, what would it look like if this wasn't a problem anymore? And then picture what the solution would have been. You'll come up with all kinds of ideas. Once you start to apply this, not just in real world situations, but in your specific creative setting, your church, your agency, your team, maybe your family, maybe your own life, maybe your instrument, you will find that this has enormous repercussions and helps break creative block and move you into a new space, a new realm of creativity. Okay, we're gonna move on to our next creative exercise now, which is also one of my favorites. It is called construction. You are never building from nothing. Everything is iterative. Everything has been built on the back of something else. And sometimes all you need is a spark. For me, there is nothing more intimidating than a big piece of blank paper and a pencil, because I go, I don't even know where to begin. Creativity is never static. 
As long as you are breathing, you will never be building from scratch. There is always a blueprint and all you need to do is take the next step. So now let's get into this exercise together. You are going to need a piece of paper, small, big, whatever else. If you have your iPad, you're gonna need your pencil and whatever else and do that. I want you to have a blank white sheet in front of you. Got it? What I want you to do next is to just draw a single line. It can be straight, it can be curved, it can be whatever you want. Resist the temptation to turn it into a treble clef or a letter or just a straight triangle. One single line, put it on the page. Once you've done that, I want you to turn it into a shape. Once you've done that, I want you to turn it into an object. Once you've done that, I want you to try and turn it into a person or a place or an item. You will find that if you start with this single line and then simply add elements from there, your mind can make connections that you don't even know about. You will find creative energy through this. I will find myself starting with a single line and then drawing shapes, items, places, objects, answers to my problem that came simply because I started. Sometimes starting is much, much harder than finishing. So don't put yourself in a place where you can't finish because you don't know what to do. Put yourself in a place where you're starting. This exercise is a great way to physically move your hands and to start working towards creative responses you will find that you'll start with one pen stroke and you could end up with a newly minted creation that just helps break something in your thinking and move you forward into the next. Okay, we're gonna to move to our final creative exercise here and that is departation. The exercise is simply this. Look outside your own lane for fresh ideas. I want you to write down your answers to the following questions. What field of industry could I learn from? Too many of us just kind of stick in our own lane and just think that's the only place we're going to learn. One of my favorite music producers, uh, who's also a very accomplished guitarist, used to tell me that when he was looking for creative ideas, he would listen to music that didn't have his instrument. Because as soon as you hear your instrument, you go, oh, that's, that's the part, that's what I play, done, there's the guitar. He'd listen to music that didn't have guitar, so he would go, if I was playing on this, what would I add? This is great exercise. For me, when I was playing drums, I would do this a lot. I'd listen to music without drums and I'd go, if I was to play drums on this, what would I add? You should do this. What field of industry could you be learning from? Maybe you need to go and talk to an industrial designer. Maybe you need to go and talk to someone who's a potter. Maybe you need to go and talk to someone who's a ballet dancer. Maybe you need to talk to someone who's a poet and maybe you need to go and talk to someone who does something completely different from you. It might even be fire breathing, origami, synchronized swimming all at the same time. I don't know how that's possible, but the idea is this. I want you to think about what's a field of industry that I haven't considered that could teach me something about what I do. The second is this, what music genre could I explore? This is my pet peeve, is people who go, oh, I don't listen to this, or I don't listen to this, or I only listen to this. It's great if you've got a favorite, but what you cannot do is limit yourself to that one area. I try to listen widely to a wide array of music. Do I enjoy all of it? No. Can it teach me something? Yes. And that's sometimes more important. A lot of us go, I don't like that. And so the second we do that, we shut down our ability to be taught and we shut down our ability to learn. I would encourage you, if you hate country music, just today, I want you to go and find one song and listen to it. I don't need you to like it, but I do need you to go, what do people like about this? It might not be country, it might be something very different. We can rattle off any genre we want. Have you got a genre that you could explore and look for lessons in? There are so many great genres of music that you have not explored because you've shut your mind off to them. If you have an open mind, you will have a growing mind. The third question is this, what form of art most confuses me? What form of art most confuses me? I think a lot of people will go, oh, I'm a dancer, but I don't understand film or I'm a filmmaker, but I don't understand dance. This is your opportunity. Figure out exactly which form of art confuses you the most. Some people have no aptitude for architecture. Some have no aptitude for poetry. I would like you to figure out which form of art most confuses you. Once you have that, I would like you to seek out somebody in your community who loves that type of art. For me, this is how I learned to appreciate dance though I continue to rip on it every opportunity. It's how I learned to appreciate architecture, though for the longest time I just thought buildings were buildings. It's how I learned to appreciate type, font, graphic design, by talking to people who are passionate about it and taking away my confusion and my um, mistrust of that medium and realizing that it had more to teach me than I thought. And the last question is this, 
When can I make time to hit a museum or art gallery to hunt down ideas? There is nothing more inspiring for me than walking around a gallery with a new exhibition or a, a regular exhibition or a museum. Sometimes all I need to do is change my physical space and go and see something. For me, looking at art changes the way I think about my leadership, changes the way I think about my creativity, changes the way I think about my physical health, changes the way I think about my emotional and mental health. If you are looking for fresh ideas and fresh creativity, when was the last time you went and sorted it out? Somehow we are graced in our city and I'm sure in yours with an incredible assortment of art of all shapes and sizes that can inspire us and challenge us. So if you wanna be one of those people who is generating creative ideas, go and start to breathe them in, drink them in, read the books, have them on your coffee table, have one in the WC, have one in the living room, have all these things around you so you are surrounding yourself and immersed by creativity. Last question is this, what materials do I constantly overlook? Hopefully you've been paying attention to what I've been saying and hopefully not to what I've been wearing. Hopefully you've noticed that I'm sitting down, but you didn't notice the materials that are in this chair or on this TV stand or around me. What materials do you constantly overlook? And I'm not talking about, you know, going and getting a sewing machine and making yourself a coat of many colors. Is it concrete? Is it Pro Tools? Is it a certain type of depth of field that you've observed? The great artists, the great directors, the great producers, they are constantly looking for materials, tones, textures, shape, colors that they can apply to their art. My favorite producers are the ones who are inspired by color and my favorite directors are the ones who are inspired by sound. What materials have you overlooked in your quest for creativity? This is an opportunity for you to now go and branch out and use your sensory, creativity giftings, the things God has given you. And listen, see, smell, taste and touch all that is around you and let it inspire you creatively. I'm really happy with how this has gone. I hope you are too and I hope that you've been inspired by this and walked away with practical things that can help you. If you're looking for books that can help you, um, change is fantastic, originals is fantastic, mindset is fantastic. If you're looking for podcasts that can help you, our Hillsong Creative Podcast, far and away, one of the best you can find. The Green Room is great and Justice For All is great. I made up those last two because I want to start them and haven't started it yet. By the time you are watching this, maybe they're real. And sites that we are probably aren't allowed to talk about, but I had this on there, so I'm really sorry, guys. Uh, this is Colossal is great. The Browser is great. Fubis is great. You should be looking for digital resources to inspire you everywhere you go. Essentially, my hope for you is that our time together talking around the idea of innovation for you, creativity for everyone, helps you understand that creativity is not a gift that a few people possess, but a muscle all of us can develop. This has been our masterclass and our time together. I'm really grateful for you and hope that you found everything you need and you're ready to get going on your creative journey wherever you are. God bless you.